CNN's first post-debate poll is out. Everybody has been waiting to see these numbers because Trump's lead has slipped, and, but Carly Fiorina and Marco Rubio's have soared. So let's listen to Marco Rubio, though, downplay his double-digit bounce. I'm not sure the mid-September winners are where you want to be, obviously. You want to do well, and uh, they're relevant because they're deciding who gets on the stage, but they're not really going to decide this election. All right, here to break down the shakeup in the GOP race and so much more are CNN political commentator Tara Setmeyer and CNN political commentator and host of the Ben Ferguson Show, Ben Ferguson. Guys, great to have you Good here. Thank you. Okay, Tara, what did Marco Rubio do right? Let's put up his numbers right now. We'll see, this is again the first post debate poll, and we'll show you that Trump's lead has slipped to 20, from 32% down to 24%. Fiorina has gone up from 3% to 15%. Marco Rubio is notable because he went from 3% before the debate to 11%. What did he do right? He had a strong debate showing. He had a command of the issues. He talked about foreign policy. He talked about things that I think most people want to see as far as the qualities and leadership uh, skills of the next president of the United States. And he was above the fray. You that Marco Rubio has really not gotten into the back and forth and any of the mudslinging with Donald Trump. The same thing happened in the first debate. I wrote on CNN.com after the first debate that Marco Rubio was the adult in the room. And I think he, that carried over into this debate as well. Him and Harley Fiorina clearly showed that they had command of the issues and specifics. I think it was something that more and more people are looking for at this point instead of platitudes, which is what Donald Trump has continued to serve up. So he had an exposure to 20 million people. They looked at that and they he said, okay, this is somebody that we think could potentially be president of the United States. And he Carly did well. Fiorina did well in the debate. She's also the first person we've seen go at Donald Trump and win. Handle uh, him. In past, yeah. when you've gone at Trump, you've lost. Ben, let me ask you something. Uh, Rubio going up, Fiorina going up, also a byproduct of seeing Trump for the first time go down, Carson go down. Do you think that we have seen the peak for those two men? Possibly. And I think you, when you look at what happened after Wednesday, substance actually mattered to a core in the GOP that is being polled here. And they like substance. And if you even look at the way that Carly Fiorina went after Donald Trump, it was not in some reality TV spat that may be fun to watch. Just look at her response on, on the question about her face and Donald Trump saying, look at that face. She said, I think women in this country understood exactly mm -hmm. what he meant. And she stopped talking. That is the way that you score points against Donald Trump. You don't score points when you get into this shouting match. In many ways, how we saw him and Jeb Bush do it during the debate, that doesn't help you at all. And I think with Rubio, when people watched him, they said, this is a guy that understands the issues. And he was also talking a lot during that 30 plus minute span when Donald Trump didn't say anything at all, which is virtually unheard of, yeah. but he did not have a command of the issues. And I think people noticed that. Let's talk about what's happened over the weekend with Donald Trump and Ben Carson talking about Muslims. Dr. Carson said that he does not believe that a Muslim can be president of the United States, and he believes that Islam is consistent with the Constitution. We had one of his spokespeople on New Day who says that Dr. Carson is not going to apologize for those remarks because he believes them. So listen to Armstrong Williams on this. You don't need to clarify what you believe in. It is consistent. It is it is who you are. You believe in America. You love this country. You see what's happening in Europe. You see what is happening in the Middle East, in the world. He believes in telling the truth. You may not like the truth, but it is the truth. And, you, and, and when you tell the truth, Allison, mm -hmm. there is nothing to apologize for. Tara, what do you think of that response? Is this the right position Dr. Carson's staking out? I think that Dr. Carson has been very consistent in sticking to his guns. If he believes what he believes, he believes it. Um, at least he's honest about it. And this is why we have elections in this country. People can look at that and they can say they agree with his position or they don't. Um, you know, I think that we're getting into something here. We're talking about 0.8 percent, less than 1 percent of the population is Muslim in this country. But millions of people. Yes, absolutely. And I think that it's up to the American people to decide if we, if one day we have a candidate who is who is Muslim. Whether they feel as though that person is best qualified to be president You're of the United really States, I think we're putting it. To I think we're blowing this way out of proportion. All right, so let's talk about why we are. Ben, I'll come to you. Well, all right, fine. Then Ben, I'll come to you right now. Um, okay. So this isn't about a simple popularity contest on an issue: tax, don't tax, uh, wall, no wall. <laughs> That's not what it is. Yeah. This is about who you are and how you identify as a people and a culture. This is a man who wants to be president of the United States saying all Muslims should not be considered
to be president of the United States, not for the Constitution. I'm not talking about the Constitution, neither is Dr. Carson, yeah. but because he believes it, and you're saying, yeah, that's okay. No, there's, well, there's a trust issue here. I'll put it this way. If there's a hardcore conservative that's a Muslim that was running against Hillary Clinton, trust me, I'd be supporting the hardcore conservative running against Hillary Clinton. That may have been a better way for him to put it, but I also think this goes into a bigger issue. There is a trust issue with the Muslim community and a lack of, I think, bluntness about what has happened within this country, within some mosques, whether it be in Minneapolis, whether it be in Texas, whether it be shootings or attacks that have happened at Fort Hood, there does not seem to be a very good policing. There is a trust issue here. We also know that the FBI says that they are investigating different people in all 50 states. So when Ben Carson says, I would be concerned or worried, or it does not align with my values to put someone who believes believes in the Muslim faith in the White House, I really don't think that is so shocking to most voters because there are a lot of Americans that have a trust issue with terrorism and the lack of policing in many communities of extremism. And we see them connected to mosques in this country literally every time they do a Boston bombing or wherever it may be. That's right. And a Muslim candidate would have every opportunity to explain their belief system, their faith, and how it is consistent with the United States Constitution and our belief system in this country. That's why we have elections. So I don't know why we're having this big dust up because over if you ben said, Carson I don't trust that an opinion. Italian to be president, you know, a but lot Italian, of them are in the mob. We don't have the same, come on, Chris, you, you're in a, the mafia compared yeah, to... Yeah, I am, but there's, there's a difference Islam, between... It's, because it's everybody's going to say they have Muslim the friends, mob. and no, I don't know yeah. how you say that, and at the same but time I mean, condemn an well, entire class they, of people. That's it, all. He's, I don't think he did that. I think he said that, in, in, you know, for him governing the country, he didn't say anything about religion. He didn't say anything about throwing Muslims out. He didn't say anything about they shouldn't have equal opportunity. He didn't say any of that. Well, he said of. he didn't feel comfortable. Yeah, that's, a, mean, that's his prerogative to say if he feels like that. Look, and it, it, well, he's certainly, yeah, right, he's right, to, he's certainly right. okay to say it. Uh, he has the right to say I don't it. Think he's right. Right. Uh, 50%, uh, 50 of Americans would say that they would never put an evangelical conservative Christian in the White House, but we don't attack them when they say that. There are people that would never Nobody vote said for it. It's okay. Find me a presidential I mean, candidate yeah. who said it. Well, listen, there was a few no, I'm Voters have said yeah. they don't trust people like George Bush, for example, because his religion was too big of a uh -huh. deal. And it was okay to say that. Right. They worried about John okay. F. Kennedy, the same yeah. thing with Catholicism. But 60% of the people right. over the summer in a Pew poll said they would and feel comfortable won. with a Muslim running for, in the presidency. So I guess it's not that big of a deal. We have a lot more to talk about. Uh, Tara, Ben, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on for the debate. Thanks. Michaela. We have a special conversation coming up. A group of prominent Latinos are uniting to come out against Donald Trump's anti-immigrant rhetoric. They are doing it with music. And this man, the one, the only, Emilio Estefan, is heading the effort, and he is going to join us to talk all about it. Doesn't he look handsome? <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> it's more than a network and the cloud. It's reliable uptime and multi-layered security. It's how you stay connected to each other and to your customers. With CenturyLink, you get advanced technology solutions, including an industry-leading broadband network and cloud and hosting services, all with dedicated, responsive support. With CenturyLink as your trusted technology partner, you're free to focus on growing your business. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. That's a big bull. I think that's old Cyrus. 1,800 pounds of do whatever the heck 